Hi everyone, it's Rain here. Welcome to Healing with the Inner Tarot. In this series, I will be using this book, The Inner Tarot by Kate Van Horn, as my guide to a 78 episode healing journey that I'm very happy to share with you. So thank you so much for being here. It's disclaimer time. I'm not a therapist, but I am a self therapy enthusiast with some psychology education under my belt. If you feel the need to seek professional help, please do so. There are a lot of resources out there, okay? And I also wanted to mention that some of the subject matter in this series could be triggering for some people, so please keep that in mind. But let's get to the good stuff. In the description below, I've included a downloadable PDF workbook with some homework you can do after watching today's show. Included in this workbook is a tarot spread I created called Be Your Best Self. So that's my gift to you. Let's get to it. Today we are talking about the Eight of Pentacles and how we can use this card in our healing. The Eight of Pentacles is about dedication, commitment, learning, mastery, focus, and action. If we look at the card, we see a man sitting on a bench at the edge of town. He's carving pentacles into his eight coins. He's isolated himself so that he can focus he has no distractions. He's absorbed in what he's doing. He's dedicated to the work at hand, and he seems to be committed to working hard and delivering the best possible product he can. Now, if we look at the reverse Eight of Pentacles, the suggestion is quite the opposite of striving to be your best. In the reverse, you may lack motivation. You may rush through things very uninspired, and your skills may not be very good. The quality of your work and what you do in life is quite poor. I think a lot of us go through that reversed Eight of Pentacles moment where we just don't have the motivation in us to do the task at hand and to focus on it, right? There could be many reasons for this. A lot of people struggle with self-discipline. There's procrastination, just lack of motivation. Um, Poor health habits, that's a big one. Health issues, lack of structure or routine. Mental health issues such as depression. And I mention that because I have been diagnosed with depression. I'm lucky enough to be able to manage it at this point, but it's always there. And when it flares up, I find it extremely difficult to keep a routine or focus on my long-term goals. Um, when it does flare up, I don't have the motivation to do anything but sit in bed and binge watch TV shows while I'm eating M&Ms. And it's really hard to get out of that reversed Eight of Pentacles energy. But today, I would like to focus on the upright Eight of Pentacles. Now, this is what Kate says in her book as she describes the Eight of Pentacles. You've been plugging along through this Pentacles cycle and perhaps thinking to yourself, seriously? Is the hard work going to pay off yet? Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of us have. Like, why, why is it taking so long? If this card came to you, I'd like to say yes, or you're getting very, very close. Now, when the Eight of Pentacles shows up, it's because you have shown up. I love that. You have shown up. You're working wholeheartedly towards something you believe in. Now, do you remember the Seven of Pentacles where we were really reflecting? I'll show you the card. You've done a lot of thinking. You've set some goals for yourself. You've done a pros and cons list. You've chosen not to multitask. You've decided to make that choice to be committed to your work, to your goals, and or to your projects. You're ready to dedicate yourself to the hard work that's needed to get the job done. Kate also says in her book, the reward will be your expertise and skill at the end of the effort. Your reward will be your expertise and your skill at the end of the effort. So that isn't, isn't that just a great reward to have expertise and skill? That's your reward <laughs> for showing up. Now, I often talk about the effort I've put into my YouTube channels since I started them in 2021. There were many times that I was in that reversed Eight of Pentacles energy because I felt like the effort wasn't worth the gain. But over the years, I've changed my perspective. 
I've become that upright Eight of Pentacles. I'm committed and dedicated and I show up for it. When I work, I isolate myself and I focus. I strive to be the best I can be, to do the best work I can be, uh, the best work I can do, that is. And this doesn't just apply to my business ventures. I try to be the best person I can be overall. I kind of said jokingly to a friend that I want to be the kindest person in the world. And this is also something I'm actually really dedicated to doing. I want to be the kindest person in the world. Of course, you know, we all have our moments when we don't shine, but my attitude starts to take over and I'm able to bounce back really quickly and shine more than I ever did. So. This is a way of thinking that also helps when depression rears its ugly head. I don't deny it's ever happening, the depression that is. I don't pretend I'm not, I don't have it. When it flares up, I don't deny it happening, but I don't allow it to take over. I sit with it, I give it time, I let it progress, but I always make sure to remind myself of my commitments to be the best rain I can be. So my friends, how can you be the best version of yourself? How can you be the best person you can be? That's what I'm gonna focus on today, being your best self. A little cheerleading for the beginning of November. So I wanted to share a few quotes with you about being your best self. Be yourself, but always your better self. That's Carl Miser. Here's a quote by David Viscott. Your ultimate goal in life is to become your best self. Your immediate goal is to get on the path that will lead you there. And the Dalai Lama said, the goal is not to be better than the other man, but your previous self. I absolutely love that quote. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I adore him. He says, if someone tells you, you can't, they're showing you their limits, not yours. I just wanted to mention, you probably hear it, one of my dogs is snoring very loudly, <laughs> but she's being her best self, so I'm allowing it. I know you guys don't mind. This is reality TV, right? Well, let's get back to it. Let's not confuse workaholism and perfectionism with dedication to being the best we can be. Being your best self should not cause anxiety, doubt, regret, or any of these types of feelings. It should be a journey of reward, education, and fulfillment. Of course, there will be failures along the way, but if we can see the failures and even the challenges that face us as lessons and as stepping stones to moving forward, then we can really enjoy the process of being our best selves and we can feel proud of that. And that motivates us to be even better. You know, it's a ripple effect. I wanted to share a story with you um, about how to take failure as a lesson and as a stepping stone to keep motivating yourself to move forward. You guys must know who Mel Blanc is, right? If you don't know him by name, you definitely know him by voice. He's the voice of the Looney Tunes. Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Tweety Bird. Well, I have his autobiography and I wanted to just tell you a little story about Mel Blanc. He was the voice of practically every Looney Tune from the late 1930s up until he passed away in the late 80s. So about 55 years. And of course, we all know him best as Bugs Bunny and Tweety Bird and ugh, Daffy Duck. I mean, every, all of them, Porky Pig, um, Yosemite Sam, <laughs> Pepe Le Pew, all of those voices. That was him. In his book, he tells the story of how he showed up at Warner Brothers Studios. Every week for a year and a half, he asked for an audition. Every week for a year and a half, he was flatly rejected by the same person, but he kept going back. A year and a half later, he showed up again and noticed that there was a different person at that desk. He asked what happened to the last guy and was told that he'd passed away. So once again, ready for rejection, he asked for an audition. And guess what? He got it. If it weren't for his persistence, we'd not have enjoyed the great voices that most of us grew up with and still enjoy today. Mel Blanc used those failures to motivate him to keep going forward. 
he showed us and himself his best self. So let's first look into why people don't strive to be their best selves. There are a few reasons. Number one, time. A lot of people don't feel they have time to improve themselves. If you truly want to be your best self, and it's true of any commitment, you need to put time and energy into it. We lead such busy lives that a lot of the time we fall into comfortable ruts and use the excuse of time and energy not to find self-improvement. I personally feel that if it's important enough for you, you will find the time and energy to do it. So another reason people don't strive to be themselves, not knowing what they want. You know, having a goal or a project in mind helps us to be motivated to act. If we're on the fence about our short and long-term goals, or we're kind of fuzzy on the process, we don't even know enough about the process, this can stall us from striving for self-improvement. If we don't feel we know what our purpose in life is, again, we stall on being our best selves. So another reason people don't strive to be their best selves, mental health blocks. As I mentioned previously, I manage depress depression. In many cases, having mental health struggles stops us from the desire to improve ourselves. It stops us, it's not, not necessarily a choice. Um, I know someone who has adult ADD and focus is such an issue for that person. If the focus is disrupted, they find it really hard to get back and they fall into a slump. Once you're in that slump, it's hard to climb out of it because of the lack of energy and motivation. So another reason people don't strive to be their best selves, discomfort. We often run away from the hard, uncomfortable things. We would rather do the easy, comfortable, familiar stuff. Easy and comfortable will often lead to a lack of commitment to try new things, to try mastering a new skill or finishing something that you've started. I've seen people who would prefer to stay in a very unhealthy comfort zone rather than face some discomfort in order to change. And on a side note, that was me for years. Another reason why people don't strive to be their best selves is fear of failure. Now, coincidentally enough, my friend Ange and I are discussing this as our current topic on our series, Beyond the Veil. I'll link it below in the show notes if you want to check it out. It's on her channel and we do it every other Thursday. But we're talking about fear of failure and fear of success. And fear of failure is a biggie when it comes to not striving to be your best selves. When we fear failure, being your best self means putting yourself out there and trying out new things, even without any assurance on how it will turn out, right? So if we fear failure, it would be impossible to reach new heights and conquer new adventures if we're too afraid to fail or make mistakes. So knowing why we typically don't strive to be our best selves, we have to ask the question then, how can we turn this around? Well, the great motivational speaker, Tony Robbins says, think about the last time you felt empowered, in control, happy and accomplished. When you felt on top of the world, that's called being in your peak state, a state where your personal performance is at its highest. Now imagine living in that state all of the time. That's what happens when you learn how to be your best self. Now I previously mentioned those five reasons, and there are probably many more, but I, I mentioned five reasons why people don't strive to be their best selves. One of those reasons was mental health blocks. I don't want to give off the impression that we need to ignore our mental health and that having mental health struggles um, will always keep us from being our best selves, okay? I'll just say this again. If you feel the need to seek professional help, if you're having mental health struggles, please do so. Like I said, there are a lot of resources out there. There's no magical formula to snap our fingers and have perfect mental health. Um, I don't think any human being has perfect mental health. And what is perfect mental health anyway? Okay, rabbit hole. Sorry about that. But I, 
I wonder, you know, I talk about how we can start to be our best selves and I'm not going to discuss what is needed to improve our mental health struggles. That would be up to you and your doctor, but I really wanted to make that disclaimer so I don't give off the impression that we're choosing mental health struggles to stop us from being our best selves. That's just one of the big reasons why people are blocked and they can't become their best selves because of these mental health issues. So how can we start the process of becoming our best selves? I'm going to share some suggestions with you. The first one is change limiting beliefs to positive thoughts. Limiting beliefs, those, those limiting beliefs, it's that little monkey on your shoulder telling you that you're not good enough. You're not brave enough. You're not healthy enough to go through with a goal or an idea or a project. For example, that little monkey on your shoulder says, you're too shy to host a public seminar. Change it to a positive thought. That's a limiting belief because that limits you. If you're telling yourself you're too shy, you're probably not going to go ahead and do it. It's limiting you from being your best self. So if you change it with something like, you are going to be an amazing public speaker. People are going to be wrapped at your every word. That is a very big difference, and that can give you the motivation to push through maybe the discomfort and the fear, right? Once you recognize a limiting belief, you can start the habit of replacing it with a positive thought. And hopefully, we all hope that this will become automatic thinking with enough practice. It's one thing to say, you know, you know who you are. I know who I am. Um, I'm shy. I'm this, I'm that. But ask yourself, do you know who you could be? Limiting beliefs, I know who I am, I'm a shy person, I'm not able to get up and do a seminar. Who could you be? You could be someone who is shy, but also who has the guts to go out there and the motivation to do that seminar anyway. And the more you practice, the more you'll be good at it. So, limiting beliefs, switch them to positive thoughts. Back to our list. Another way we can start this process is finding our purpose in life. Once you're able to change those limiting beliefs that have been holding you back, a whole new world of possibilities can open up to you. You can do, be, and have anything you want. Now you must determine what that is. Your purpose is what drives you. It's what gets you out of bed in the morning why you make the decisions you make. You need to identify your values, your interests, and your passions. And don't be afraid to think big. It's a big world out there and we have a lot of opportunities for ourselves. When you know your purpose in life, you can use it to drive you to be the best version of you that you can be. And that's what it means to live with purpose. You can ask yourself questions like, what activities do you enjoy? Who do you enjoy being around? What impact do you want to make on the world? What is your happiest memory? Who do you look up to? How do you see yourself living your happiest life? Now, another suggestion I can make is focus. Tony Robbins says, where focus goes, energy flows. Think about that. Where focus goes, energy flows. When you find your life purpose, it will energize you and drive you to move forward. But you do need to ensure that your eye is on the prize, so to speak, that you focus on that drive and that energy. When you focus on one thing at a time, you're better able to produce the results that you want. Another thing to focus on is your strengths. Don't ignore your weaknesses. Your weaknesses are opportunities to improve yourself and learn something about yourself. If, for example, you're a strong leader, but your weakness is taking on too many things all at once, well, focus on how great of a leader you are. Focus on the fact that you can't be a, a great leader if you wear yourself thin by multitasking. So you're focusing on your strengths, being that great leader, but you're also kind of throwing that focus back on that weak weakness of multitasking. 
knowing that your weakness is multitasking, well, you can find better focus and not feed into that weakness one thing at a time. I hope that makes sense. It did to me. <laughs> so let's get back to our list. Another suggestion I can give you is learn time management. Don't, one, don't you wonder sometimes how people can achieve all that they achieve? It's because they have amazing time management skills. They don't waste one moment of their time and they prioritize things too. When you are a master of time management, it sets you free from stress and it propels you towards your ideal self and it relieves you from other people's expectations. Being accountable for the time you manage is very important. Um, check in on your progress from time to time or on a regular basis. Become your own boss. Become the boss of your time and of your life. Develop good habits and good routines. When you manage your time properly, you know what you're doing. You're not going to let someone else's expectations get in your way. Like if somebody expects you to, you know, have dinner on the table at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. when I get home, I'm thinking of Wilma and Fred Flintstone, right? Well, maybe Wilma is going to have that dinner ready at 5.15, but she has her time managed well. And she doesn't have to worry about Fred's expectations. <laughs> as my dog settles. That was my puppy, Benny. He is just a floppy, floppy boy. <laughs> so lots of dog sounds for you today. That's a bonus gift for you. <laughs> so another way that we can start the process of being our best selves is get outside of our comfort zones. Despite our best efforts, a lot of the time we can start to feel stagnant. We may have to try things that make us feel uncomfortable that challenges us. There is always more to learn if we're willing to do what it takes. Now, I believe that growth is addictive. It gives you a sense of accomplishment. When you feel good about yourself, you'll be driven to achieve more. And the more you achieve, the more motivation you'll have to continue to try new things and to work towards what you want in life to be the best person you can be. And I also wanted to mention, replace I should with I must. If you keep saying, for example, I should really write that book, that's not going to help you get out of your comfort zone. If you change it to I must write that book, you give it more importance. Be willing to face your fears and shed your old self in the process. Shed that self who stayed in the comfortable rut. Be willing to make the change. You must. <laughs> you shouldn't. You must. It's worth mentioning that being your best self, it's not about other people. It's about you. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Your version of your best self is going to be different from everyone else's. If you feel like you're stuck and you can't find the motivation to be your best self, but you have, you have the the guts to do it. You want to do it, but you just can't find that motivation. Well, give yourself a break. Show yourself some compassion. Slow things down a little. Go for a walk. Do something that you love. And remember, it's all a process. Just remember to take baby steps until you find the path that you want to take. Now, going back to Kate's book, The Inner Tarot, with every card, she has a section called Connect with the Card. For the Eight of Pentacles, she writes, Create some discipline. Outline a daily morning or evening routine you want to stick with for the next eight days. Channel the Eight of Pentacles energy and notice if you can build natural momentum and focus in just eight days. Make it accessible but challenging enough that you'll need to think about and consciously choose it day by day. Now, I have often said this, I am a carpe diem obsessed kind of gal. I feel it's so necessary to seize the day, every day. I think this stems from feeling that I've lost so much time to mental health struggles and toxic relationships. Though I try not to live with regret, sometimes I feel as though the first 45 years of my life were stolen from me. Um, I recognize how quickly time flies and I have a very, very deep respect for that. 
I think that's why I try to push myself to be the best person I can be every day of my life. And I personally live by the five principles of Reiki. And I want to share these with you because I think that they're very important. So the five principles of Reiki are, just for today, I will not be angry. Just for today, I will not worry. Just for today, I will be kind to my neighbor and all living things around me. Just for today, I will do my work with honesty. And just for today, I will be grateful for all of my blessings. These principles teach us to live in the moment. They teach us to live day by day. But at the same time, if we develop these principles, we are on our way to being our best selves already. The five principles of Reiki teach us to have self-discipline, to live in the moment, to be kind and honest and grateful. Kate also has a second section for each card called Deeper Reflection. She suggests to do some journaling. And this is what she says. Connect with and speak to your future self with the following prompt. Now here's the prompt, and it's a good one. Dear future me, today I made the necessary efforts. I stayed true to the process. I made us proud. Let me share with you, future self, how proud of you I am. Isn't that empowering? Oh my gosh, I encourage you to finish that sentence and do some very self-loving, compassionate journaling. Now, all the prompts that I mentioned in this show will be in the downloadable PDF that I have linked in the description below. And I have a nice article that you might find interesting. It's called How to Be More Disciplined, because that's part of what it takes to be your best self and to get, you know, get yourself going towards all the goals you want to meet in this life. I think you might find it interesting, and I have the link in the description below as well. Now, I'd like to offer you some general Eight of Pentacles journal prompts for you. They're from the book Journaling with the Tarot. And here they are. How attentive are you to detail? How are you isolating yourself? Are there negative consequences? Are there positive consequences? How are you distracting yourself from what is important? What do you love doing? And I just wanted to say something funny. This is my second take for this little sequence here because I kept saying, I'm going to offer you some eight of prompts pentacles <laughs> instead of eight of pentacles prompts. So I hope I didn't say that in other segments, but if I did, I just wanted to mention it to you. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. So I also have another book called Trauma Healing Journal. And for this series, I'll share a specific trauma healing prompt with you. This prompt is under the heading of dreams and aspirations. Here's the prompt. How do your dreams align with your current efforts to heal and move forward? I think this is a great journal prompt that ties everything in together. My ideas and Kate's ideas. If you have dreams about how you can live your best life and be your best self, think deeply. Are your efforts in alignment with those dreams? How do they connect with your healing journey? And how are you moving forward? Now, I'd like to pull an or oracle card for you now to emphasize the idea of being your best self. This card is from the oracle deck, Whispers of Healing. I pu pulled the mental repetition card. Now, if we look at this image, we see that Mother Nature has tree branches covered in moss and cobwebs, and they're all growing out from her head. The moss is there to protect her, but the cobwebs represent overwhelming thoughts and maybe foggy ideas. But Mother Nature doesn't seem to be bothered by these occasional conflicts in her thinking. She's ready to clear out the cobwebs and let go of things that she might think are protecting her, but are likely holding her back. 
All of the things I covered in this show are about changing your perspective, your attitudes, and embracing a new way of thinking, about getting out of your comfort zone, about changing shoulds to musts, etc. This card is perfect for this message because to become the best you that you can be, you need to actually develop new habits. This requires repetition. The guidebook says, and I love how this could be a coincidence. I don't necessarily believe in coincidences, but it's a very good synchronicity with regards to the subject of the show. Mental repetition can improve your attitude and help you feel your best. This card suggests you are holding on to limiting beliefs. It actually said limiting beliefs. And I, I drew this card after I, I got all my ideas together. <laughs> holding yourself to impossibly high expectations, fearing failure, or asserting an inability to control your emotions are examples of limiting beliefs. Let's look to Mother Nature in this card and shed those limiting beliefs and clear out those cobwebs in our mind. For every episode, I also pull a card for the collective to kind of give us a general message with regards to the topic of the show. Now, I pulled this card today. It's the Fool card from the Claude Monet Impressionism Tarot deck. I love this deck. This image is one of 41 oil paintings that Claude Monet painted during a three-year span while he was living in London. Think about his passion, his drive, his focus. He stepped out of the comfort of living in his home in Paris to visit London to do a three-year study, painting 41 oil paintings of the Waterloo Bridge and the boats during sunrises, sunsets, and foggy days. That's commitment. The message on this card is typical of the fool's message, new beginnings, innocence, and wonder. In order be to become our best selves, we need these qualities. I love this card for the collective today. So if we wrap everything up, what are the key points that we should think about for today's show? Well, the first key point, being your best self requires focus, dedication, effort, and mastery. Number two, it's important to identify our life's purpose so that we can be our best selves. Number three, everyone gets stuck, but there are ways to get unstuck from your comfort zone. You don't have to stay in a comfort zone, especially an uncomfortable, comfortable rut. Number four, creating a routine, new habits, and self-discipline are ways to start the journey towards being your best self. Number five, writing a letter to your future self on how proud you are of them helps motivate you to take action. Number six, developing an attitude of seizing the day will keep you from being stagnant. Number seven, Mental repetition and journaling will help you place more importance on the path to leading a life with purpose. And number eight, following the principles of Reiki help us to learn self-discipline, kindness, honesty, and gratitude. And isn't that all of the things that we want to have as part of our qualities of being our best selves? I think so. That's our show for today, my friends. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope it resonated with you and you got some value out of it. Please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this with anyone you think might really get something from it and leave me a comment. I love your comments. I'm loving the interaction with everybody, all of your insight. I'm just really loving it. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for watching and for commenting. Now, next week, we'll be working on the Nine of Pentacles. Until then, my friends, I'm tapping my heart, sending you lots of love. Take care. Have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye.